I'm Drew. I'm Savannah, and this is our 2021 Chevy Express 3500 Unicell Fox Van. We built this vehicle to sell, so you'll notice nobody is currently living in it, but it will be going to its new owner very soon. Something you'll notice about this vehicle, it is made by a company called Unicell, and what we loved about this vehicle is that it is one fiberglass piece that makes up the body. That means there's no seams that can leak, which is a huge problem with box trucks specifically, so we were really excited to use this platform for our build. In addition to that, it is very aerodynamic, which helps on fuel mileage, and aesthetically, it just looks incredible. It was a great choice to put a camper in. All right, let's get started with the tour, and the first thing that we will do is a walk around of the vehicle to show you all the features on the exterior. On the back of the vehicle, we have one of the biggest features, and that is the barn doors. The entire back of the build opens up. You can see the end of the bed. Also, we have a bungee cubby to store some outdoor gear. We also have an outdoor light and a backup camera up top. These doors allow easy access to underneath the bed where you can store all kinds of outdoor equipment, similar to a garage. You will also see our fresh water system that is 75 gallons of fresh water, a six gallon water heater, water purification system, and everything you need to be off grid for a long time. Also within the fresh water system, our water heater has been converted to 24 volt and that saves a little bit of energy on your off-grid power system. We also have an APEC three-stage water filter and there's a separate faucet for that within the kitchen so that you can filter your drinking water right out of this 75 gallon tank. The garage is lined with this nice rubber mat so that it really is like a garage storage space. You can put outdoor gear in here and not worry about any mud or dirt it's really easy to clean and that's why we added it to this area because we knew it would be seeing a lot of wear and tear Another great outdoor addition to this build is the external shower. Makes it really easy to wash off some gear or maybe wash off a pet. And that way when you're putting your stuff away, it's already pretty clean. Also, you can never beat a nice outdoor shower when the weather is warm. On the back end here, you'll see we have two outlets. This is a great option if you need to charge something or run an appliance when you're spending time outside. They are on their own circuit, so you can switch that on and off when you want to use it. That way, nobody can steal your power. As we mentioned, we have these two barn-style doors on the back of the unicell. Now, the vehicle actually came with a garage-style roll door. We decided to remove that and add these doors that we got from Unicell. They're actually made for the vehicle. They're just a different style that they sell. We insulated these doors, added the cedar on top, put a window on each door to add a little bit of light to the bed area. Each door has its own lock and you really can't beat being able to open up the entire back of the vehicle and let in all that fresh air and light. On the back we have this pull out ramp which was original to the truck. We decided to keep it because it's kind of a nice feature to have. You can pull it out to allow easy access in and out or you can pull it about halfway and just have a nice little outdoor table, set your drink on, a meal, whatever you're doing, maybe play a game. 
I think it's a pretty cool feature, so we decided to leave it in there. Along the driver's side of the vehicle, you'll see the shore power inlet allows you to plug in and charge your batteries when there is no sun. This huge window, which is really nice if you're sitting on the couch or at the dinette, it allows a lot of natural light into the house. Then there is this access door, allows you to fill your propane tank. This is a 20 gallon propane tank, which is pretty large for a build of this size. It fuels your oven, your stove, and your marine heater. It keeps the whole thing warm. Another interesting thing about this build, when Drew and I purchased this vehicle, it was just a regular box van. There were no doors or windows on the side of the box. In order to do the type of build that we wanted to do, which included solar on the roof, cabinets mounted to the inside, we knew that we would have to reinforce the framing of the box. We did this with all new 1x2 steel tubing. This gave us the opportunity to frame out each door and window and strategically choose each one's location. Next up is our custom built stowaway staircase. These do not support on the ground, which allows easy access in and out of the vehicle anywhere you are. Above the stairs, we have the incredible Arctic Turn Wildland store. This is an entry door as well as a security screen. We have a triple deadbolt lock. These security screens are lion and grizzly bear proof as well as human proof. So you could have this open with fresh air coming in your house even when you're sleeping. This build was made to operate freely off-grid, and a huge component of that is right up on the roof. We have three 400 watt solar panels for a total of 1200 watts of solar, and those are mounted in to our custom built roof rack. A little bit more about the vehicle itself. It is 23 feet long. It's just over nine and a half feet tall and eight foot wide. All right, that is the entire exterior of the Unicell. Now let's head inside to look at the interior. We're falling out, we have reached disaster Don't know where we're gonna be after And we do it all again and again and again and again Again and again and again and again Right when you walk in the door, you see the main switch panel. This controls things like the bathroom light, the exterior light. We also have some lights within our cabinets. There's also the main house lights, and those are on a dimmer. We have an AC outlet and also two hooks, which in our own bus, we store things like dog leashes, headlamps, anything you need to grab right as you're walking out the door. To the right of the entry door, we have a large storage cabinet. This makes use of that bubbly front of the unicell that stretches over top of the cab. Right here next to the door, we have a regular storage compartment. Next to that, we have a large drawer. This has AC and DC outlets inside the compartment so that you can charge any devices that you store in the drawer. Next to that, we have one of the largest cabinet storage spaces. This also has a light inside the compartment. You can access some of the shower plumbing and other storage spaces behind this little door. Right above all of that, we have a nice bookshelf space. This is great for storing knickknacks. There is a ledge on it, so nothing is going to come flying out of that shelf. And underneath all of that, we have a curtain that hides the cab access door. 
This provides access to the vehicle, the actual driver and passenger seat. And it's kind of nice to have those two areas separated by a door so you can choose to open or close that door. Through the cab door, you can see we have a lot of space behind both of these seats. So we decided to take advantage of that and add a 12 volt freezer that stores right behind the passenger seat. Next up, of course, we have the bathroom. We did tile on the back wall as well as FRP board on the side walls. That saves a little bit of weight within the build, but you still get to put all that beautiful tile on the back wall. You also have your regular shower fixtures, such as the shower head and the mixer valve. The 24 volt water heater runs directly to this shower, so you have both hot and cold water. For the toilet, we use a Thedford 565E. This is just a simple cassette toilet. It's really easy to use, and that's why it's our favorite choice for our builds. Underneath the toilet, we have a teak mat, and underneath the teak mat is one of our very own custom stainless steel shower pans. We actually sell these shower pans through our website, and these are a really nice feature to have in builds because they set down into the floor, which saves you a little bit of headroom which is so essential in a build. To round out the whole bathroom area we have this beautiful shower door which showcases all of the beautiful tile and the teak mat. Moving right along, we come to my favorite corner of the build. This is so cozy. We have our Dickinson Marine Heater, which keeps you very warm when it's cold outside. The ambiance of the flame and the light in the vehicle, you really can't beat it. The Dickinson P12000 has a direct vent chimney, which goes out to our roof and a deck cap. To the left of the heater, we have conveniently located AC and DC outlets. There's a dimmer switch for these lights as well as an on off for the lamp light that goes above the dinette and the couch. Above the heater, you'll see this open shelf, which is nice for just a little additional storage. Underneath this butcher block countertop, we have three more large storage drawers. Here we have what looks like just a couch. But in reality, it's actually a booth, a couch, and a bed all in one. This is our own original design. We actually sell downloadable plans for this design. And the basics of what's happening here is that there's two booth ends and each end extends. It does this with slats that slide in and out and both booth ends extend. In the middle, we have a table that comes up and down to form the booth. And when you extend both of the ends and you put the table leaf up, this forms a twin sized guest bed. You can also do all kinds of fun things like make an L shaped couch, a U shaped couch, a two person booth or a four person booth. There's so many options to this space and having a modular piece of furniture in a build this size is an absolute game changer. Underneath our couch, you can lift each booth end to allow access to the power system. The basics of the power system, it's a 24 volt power system, meaning there's a 24 volt battery pack. On the other booth end, we have our all-in-one, which is a solar charger inverter. So it's a solar charge controller, an inverter, as well as a shore power charger. On the board here, you can see the BMS, which manages all the battery cells, the main on off for our power and the Lynx distribution center, which sends power to different legs of the system. I've covered it in a piece of plexiglass just to keep it clean from dust, as well as the risk of a spilled drink. This pops right out so you can clean it really easily. The 1200 watts of solar on the roof feed into our battery bank, which is comprised of eight three volt cells in series to make a 24 volt battery. It's a total of 560 amp hours.
Now we're in the back at the bed area. We really try to make this space as homey and cozy as possible. Over here we have a switch panel. This controls all of the lights in this space. These two lights above the bed are on a separate circuit from the rest of the house lights. So you can dim those and turn them off independently. We also have an AC and a DC outlet for charging your phone or any other devices. Next to all of that is the thermostat for the heated floors. In any build, the floors are the coldest point of the whole space in the winter time. So having heated floors is a huge luxury in the winter. Right above the bed is our custom headboard. We really love having a unique design for the headboard and it adds a lot of character to the space. Above that we have a light strip and that is attached to the overhead cabinets. These two cabinets add a lot of storage to the bed area. And the final part of this space is the projector. This projector is on its own magnet mount. Now we have a piece of metal inside of this cabinet so that the projector can mount underneath the cabinet. That pairs with the projector screen, which is also mounted on magnets, and that connects to the ceiling. When we built this ceiling, we embedded magnets in very specific points all around the bus so that you have a few different mounting locations, whether you want to watch the projector in bed or you want to watch it down the length of the vehicle, what we call movie mode. It's really fun to be able to choose where you want to watch the projector within the space and also a projector in and screen just makes a lot more sense in a small build than a traditional TV. So you can see if I put the projector up to the cabinet or one of the other magnet locations within the unicell, it kind of just keeps itself there. Right at the end of the bed, we have our closet. This closet has sliding bypass doors. Now the benefit of having these type of doors is that they're right at the end of the bed. If you had traditional doors that opened outward, they open right into your bed area and that could be annoying. So we decided to do these sliding doors and we did a really fun slatted design. This is a 24 volt off grid capable mini split. The other half of this unit is mounted underneath the unicell. This is unique because traditionally air conditioning is going to be one of your biggest draws on an off grid system. But because this is 24 volt, you'll be able to run it a lot longer when you're not plugged into shore power. Something that we really like to add to a lot of our closets and cabinets is lights. It makes a huge difference to actually be able to see what's in your cabinets. We have a drawer right here in the middle and underneath that is another little storage compartment that's actually the depth of the eight inch mattress. It goes underneath the closet for even more storage. Because of the sliding closet doors, each side is essentially a mirror of the other side. They both have the storage underneath and they both have the drawers. However, this drawer acts as a sort of vanity because we added a mirror underneath the lid. This bed is a standard full-size mattress. We get a lot of questions about the size of the bed, but it is a US standard full size. And above the bed, we have a vent fan. We also have another one right above the kitchen. And having two vent fans in combination, one pulling air in, one pushing air out, creates a huge amount of ventilation inside the build. Since underneath the bed is the largest storage compartment in the whole build, we decided we wanted to be able to access that from both the doors, but also within the vehicle. We did that by placing the bed on a platform, installed hinges and gas struts that keep it open once it's lifted.
The last part of the build is the kitchen. Now there's a lot going on in the kitchen, so we're gonna walk you through a few parts of it. Right here we have the switch panel. This turns a lot of the lights on and off. We also have an on off switch for the 24 volt water heater and the water pump. Behind the counter we have our inset planter box. Having plants right behind your faucet underneath the kitchen window adds so much color and life to the space. We love having the inset planter box. In front of that, we have two faucets. The silver one is for the APEC three-stage water filter, and the black one comes directly from the 75-gallon fresh water tank. Underneath that, we have our sink with the sink cover. down we have our pull out pantry. This is where we store our canned goods and in a small space being able to stack canned goods and dry goods vertically saves so much room in your pantry. Then we have the compartment underneath the sink. This houses the gray water plumbing and the gray water tank both just for the sink. This is a seven gallon gray water tank that you can unscrew and empty by hand. Next to the sink, we have our pull-out cutting board for some additional counter space. Underneath that is three storage drawers. And at the very bottom, we have one of the cutest features of the whole build, and that is the Mateo drawer. Mateo is our 10-pound Chiwini, and we noticed while we were traveling that his food and water dish would always be rolling all over the van. So we decided to create this custom pet drawer so that the food and water dish are always secure. And when you go to drive, you can just push it in and it won't spill. Right here we have our oven and three burner stove top. Behind that is the inset knife block. This is a really unique way to use your countertop as storage. Next to that we have a small compartment and this has a basket underneath for under counter storage. Underneath the oven, we have a large storage drawer for pots and pans. And then above my head, we have three huge storage compartments for all of your kitchen items and dishes. The final part of this kitchen is the refrigerator. Now, this is a freezer that we converted into a refrigerator using an Inkbird temperature monitoring system. This is a more affordable option than some of the 12 volt refrigerators, and we love having the huge capacity of the fridge for groceries. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. That wraps up the tour, and I hope you really enjoyed the build. If you're interested in what it took to take this vehicle from a regular box van to a home on wheels, we have an entire build series where we documented every step of the process. You can find that on our YouTube channel, and we'll see you for the next build.